Right friends, welcome back to third capsule and this is about nuclear energy and overview and you will learn lot many things about what is enriched uranium, what is heavy water, what is the moderator, all these things I am going to discuss and overall what is the energy scenario as far as nuclear power is concerned and what are the world problems and why the decision to go for 10 heavy water reactors of 700 megawatt each is the wise decision. All these things we are going to deliberate and most of the things I have taken from the article written by M. R. Srinivasan who is considered to be the authority on atomic energy matters. He was former chairman atomic energy commission and Padma Vibhushan awardee and the news item is India is going to build 10 heavy water reactors to boost nuclear power and why this heavy water reactors assumed significance and what is the need for using this heavy water reactors but not light water reactors all these things we will deliberate. Please look into this natural uranium constitutes 99.3 percent U-238 and 0.7 percent U-235 these two are isotopes of uranium and U-235 constitutes 92 protons and 143 neutrons and it can sustain a fission chain reaction. So, U-235 can sustain a fission chain reaction and unfortunately in the natural uranium this U-235 is only 0.7 percent. That is why what people will do to sustain fission reaction, they will enrich uranium. What is meant by enriched uranium? Enriched uranium means the component of U-235 is increased. Initially in the natural uranium, the component is 0.7 percent and it is increased in the enriched uranium. Enriched uranium can be classified into low enriched uranium of say 3 to 5 percent. So, in the overall uranium component if 3 to 5 percent is U-235 which is highly fissile material then that is low enriched uranium and 3 to 5 percent enrichment is sufficient to produce nuclear power but enrichment of up to 90 percent is required to make atom bomb. So, to create atom bomb enrichment up to 90 percent is required and up to 3 to 5 percent of enrichment is sufficient for nuclear power right and this enrichment or you can say increasing the component of U-235 takes place with the centrifuges and enrichment process no doubt costly process. And at the same time, there are international safeguards for enrichment and you may have a doubt why international safeguards are required. International safeguards are required because of the reason if the enrichment goes up to 90 percent, then atom bombs can be made. So, enriched uranium is costly and reactor grade uranium constitutes around 3 to 5 percent of U-235. Right. So, if enriched uranium is used, then light water can be used as moderator and coolant, but when natural uranium is used, then you have to use heavy water as coolant and moderator. Please understand carefully, when enriched uranium is used, then one can use light water as moderator and coolant, but when the natural uranium is used, then heavy water is to be used as moderator and coolant. This is the important point which you should not miss. And what is heavy water? Heavy water is nothing but oxygen and deuterium. And to understand, please look into this. This is proteum, this is deuterium and this is tritium. And here deuterium is nothing but isotope of hydrogen and in the normal hydrogen atom it will have only one proton, one electron. 
but deuterium this is isotope of hydrogen which constitutes one neutron right so deuterium and oxygen or you can say d2o is nothing but this heavy water so heavy water constitutes oxygen and deuterium deuterium is nothing but isotope of hydrogen so please understand the difference normal water is h2o which is called light water but d2o is called heavy water so here the advantage of heavy water is it absorbs fewer neutrons so in the enriched uranium when normal water is used as moderator and coolant there is no problem but when the natural uranium is used which itself has got lesser percentage of fissile material u235 you cannot use normal water or light water you have to use this heavy water if you use heavy water it absorbs fewer neutrons than normal water so if normal water is used when we are using natural uranium then there is a tendency for the normal water to absorb neutrons so that the fissile activity will be reduced right so here it enables natural uranium to be used as a fuel it does not require the uranium enrichment process so bluntly please understand when enriched uranium is used you can use normal water or light water but when the natural uranium is used you have to use heavy water which is nothing but d2o as heavy water absorbs less number of neutrons right and the other important point is what is meant by moderator we discussed this water will be used as moderator as well as coolant what is the moderator moderator is a medium that reduces the speed of fast neutrons it reduces the speed of fast neutrons thereby turning them into thermal neutrons capable of sustaining a nuclear chain reaction involving u235 right so heavy water is a must if natural uranium is used right having learned this now let us move on with regard to the country and number of reactors you see america has got 100 reactors and whereas india has got 22 reactors i am talking about number of reactors and if you look at the total net electrical capacity if you look at net electrical capacity usa has got 1 lakh megawatt of electrical capacity india has got just 6000 megawatt of nuclear power capacity and france 63000 japan 40000 china 31000 and our position is just 6000 megawatt right and if you look at the nuclear share of total energy mix nuclear power share of total energy mix it is 72% in france 52% in ukraine if you look at india it is just 3.4% right so looking at all these things there is lot of scope and if you look at the nuclear in the total energy mix india is almost lagging behind in comparison to other countries right friends now nuclear energy and india four paradigms what are various types of reactors where do we stand and what is world experience all is not well in the world now things are going very bad for westinghouse as well as areva under the circumstances the decision by the government appears to be the wise decision if you look at four paradigms in india two us reactors at tarapur with enriched uranium and india developed 16 reactors just now we discussed we have 22 nuclear power reactors with 6000 megawatt and out of 22 16 reactors developed by india with natural uranium very important 
and two US reactors were established at Tarapur with enriched uranium and two Canadian reactors with natural uranium and now two reactors by Russia at Kudankulam in Tamil Nadu are with enriched uranium. So, what I mean to say is India developed sufficient expertise with the natural uranium and 14 of them are 220 megawatt and two of them 540 megawatt. So far these are in operation and now India is developing 700 megawatt reactors, right. So, this is in general four paradigms if you see the development of nuclear power in our country. First one, paradigm one, two units were established in Tarapur, Maharashtra with enriched uranium based on US technology going on well for the past 47 years. This is, I am talking about this first paradigm and if you look at the second paradigm, India's own 16 nuclear power units commenced in 1983 establishing its own nuclear power units and so far India built 16 units. And these are with our own technology materials and equipment and these reactors use natural uranium as a fuel and 14 of them 220 and 2 of them 540. Then this is Rajasthan Atomic Power Station, two units were set up with the Canadian technology using natural uranium and first one is into some problems and second one is running satisfactorily. Then paradigm 4 is a recent origin when two reactors of 1000 megawatt each were established by Russia with enriched uranium at Kudankulam in Tamil Nadu, right. So, work in progress. So far we have discussed about 22 reactors and 8 reactors work is in progress out of 8, 2 more are going to be established at Kudankulam by Russia. Two more of 1000 megawatt each are going to be established by Russia at Kudankulam. And if you look at India, nuclear power unit of 700 megawatt capacity using natural uranium was developed during 2000-2010 and construction work of two units at Kakrapar in Gujarat and two in Rajasthan were taken up and two more will come up in Haryana. So, India is going to establish this 700 megawatt units using natural uranium and now government has given go ahead for 10 more. So, 6 units are going to come up during the next few years and now the cabinet decision is to go in for another 10, right. So, we have discussed previously total 22 units put together are more than 6000 megawatt. And now this Russian two reactors and India's six reactors which are in progress will make up a total of 30 reactors with a total capacity of around 13,000 megawatt. And now in addition to this 13,000 megawatt, government has given go ahead for 10 numbers of 700 megawatt or 7,000 megawatt more, right. Then this Civil Liability for Nuclear Damage Act 2010 has slowed down our nuclear energy process because this Civil Liability for Nuclear Damages Act came into force in 2010 and subsequently nuclear power plants establishment by western countries like USA came to the standstill because it made the supplier liable for paying the damages under certain circumstances. After this 2010 act, US nuclear industry was not prepared to consider any cooperation with India with those conditions. As a result of this, India came up with the mechanism of an Indian nuclear insurance pool. So, Indian nuclear insurance pool was created and here the protection to the supplier is given with the establishment of INIP, right. So, the issue was finally solved and in between during 4-5 years, there was not much activity because of this civil liability for nuclear damage act of 2010, right. Now, all is not well in the world. I have listed three incidents. First one is Fukushima accident of 2011. It jolted nuclear industry globally and first priority now is the assessment of safety of nuclear plants in operation. 
because they have to be tested for beyond design basis natural calamities. As far as design is concerned, whether they are fit for natural calamities or not, that is the first and the foremost task of the Fukushima accident. Then one more thing is the availability of shale gas at low prices also impacted the nuclear revival in United States of America. Moreover, Japan is not showing interest after the Fukushima accident. So, Fukushima accident is one turning point in the history of nuclear power because some of the countries are not showing much interest. Even Japan is not showing much interest. Then all is not well with the Westinghouse. I have given the history here. Westinghouse majority shareholding is by Toshiba of Japan and I have given the historical circumstances. Westinghouse designed a 1400 megawatt enriched uranium reactor complying with the enhanced safety requirements and at the same time Westinghouse also secured orders for establishment of four reactors in southern US and what happened is the projects in USA suffered great delays and huge cost overruns because of this. Toshiba of Japan, which is majority shareholder of Westinghouse, incurred 7 to 8 billion dollars in losses due to the nuclear business in US. So, Westinghouse filed for bankruptcy and you may have a doubt, why this concerns India? This concerns India because Westinghouse is supposed to establish six reactors at Kovada in Srikakulam district of Andhra Pradesh. And because of the bankruptcy case, the future is uncertain. Then if you look at Areva of France, Areva is also not doing well. It has got its own set of problems. There are some quality issues, quality of important forgings. And at the same time, there is some arbitration case pending between Finland and France. So, under the circumstances, even Areva of France is not also in good stead. So, Westinghouse is into problems, Areva is into problems. So, under the circumstances, government's decision appears to be the most important decision to go for indigenously developed heavy water reactors, 10 numbers of reactors with 7000 megawatt capacity and here I have given Areva and losses. You can go through it. So, all is not well with Areva and in a nutshell, safety is in question after the Fukushima accident worldwide. Nuclear power reactors establishment is getting delayed badly and resulting into severe losses. Bankruptcy in USA by Westinghouse and its effects on Toshiba. Delays and losses of Areva of France. So, under the circumstances, we have to view the decision of the government of India to establish 10 numbers of 700 megawatt pressurized heavy water reactors. Right. So, the success story of PHWRs, if you see in our country, PHWRs are pressurized heavy water reactors. They are of our design and construction. During the last 5 years, the cumulative capacity factor was 78 percent and the reactors have operated continuously for periods exceeding 300 days quite regularly and one of our reactors was online for 765 days. This is the second longest run in the world. The cost of power has been less than that of coal from the region, right? So, under these circumstances, world scenario is not good. We are successful in heavy water reactors. So, if you look at from these aspects, India's decision to go for 10 numbers of 700 megawatt PHWRs is it timely and Indian industry is well placed to supply all the components and materials required for these reactors. Right friends, we learned so many things from this article. Have a nice day. Thank you.